When I was 14 years old, I was in an accident and severely injured my leg. I was taken to the hospital in an ambulance. At the moment of impact, I saw my entire life flashing before my eyes in just a few seconds, as if I were watching a movie at high speed. Every detail of my life passed before my eyes. I thought about all the people I loved and felt sorry for having been mean to someone. Time seemed to slow down, almost coming to a stop. I believed I was going to die and wondered how that was possible when I didn't even have a happy memory. I thought about how sad and pointless it was to die so unhappy, without any joyful memories. I had a very difficult childhood. I was so angry about not having happy memories. I was abused, unloved, and unwanted. It was a terrible childhood. After arriving at the hospital, I waited in the waiting room for four hours, bleeding. When my father pulled back the curtain and called a nurse, I was covered in blood from head to toe, with my kneecap protruding. I needed urgent surgery. After the x-rays, I was taken to the operating room where they administered gas to put me to sleep. I was worried that something would go wrong during the anesthesia. I remembered that my grandfather had woken up during an operation and they hadn't finished yet. This thought still haunts me to this day. I inhaled as much gas as possible because I didn't want to wake up during the procedure, hoping only to fall asleep and dream. However, I never lost consciousness and began to panic. I screamed and thrashed without actually moving or shouting loudly. I just kept repeating, I'm still awake. The second thing, I realized I was on the ceiling, completely calm and peaceful. I wondered why I could see the ceiling so clearly and so close. I was weightless and seemed to be gently bouncing between the ceiling and the floor. I heard a super high-pitched noise that was both heard and felt physically. It was painful to hear, and I wanted to leave that area immediately. Suddenly, I found myself in a black space, blacker than the deepest darkness and completely empty. I have always been afraid of the dark, fearing that something might reach me, I tried to feel my body, but I didn't have one. I thought I was dreaming and didn't understand why I couldn't feel my body. I wondered how I appeared without a body. I tried to touch myself, or at least what I perceived as hands, but I simply passed through myself. I wondered where the light was and where my father was. I didn't like being in the darkness and looked for a light switch or something similar. I thought it was pointless to move if I couldn't see where I was going. I wanted to get out of the darkness thinking that something might reach me. I didn't perceive any danger throughout the entire experience. As soon as I felt uncomfortable and very worried about my father and the light, I saw a dot of light in the distance approaching quickly. I was an abused child and was often hit. I feared the light hitting my face, so I moved to the side to avoid being struck. I turned around and saw a magical light full of colors. Gold, white, pink, and all the colors together like a diamond reflecting all the colors and sparkles. It seemed alive and was calling me. I first put in my hand and felt an incredible, indescribable sensation of immense love. I immersed the rest of my body in the light and felt completely enveloped. I became one with the light, tightly wrapped as if someone was hugging me. I thought I never wanted to leave that feeling, fearing it might fade away. I never returned to the darkness. I tore down my walls for the first time in my life, allowing myself to lose myself in the experience. I danced in the light, spinning happily to feel a positive sensation for the first time. I wondered how I looked since I couldn't see or feel myself before. I got a 360-degree view of myself. I was, as always, visible only from the shoulders up. I thought, well, I look the same. I saw two white lights in the distance, in the shape of people. I thought the medication was making my vision blurry, so I kept blinking to see if it was just an illusion. I couldn't see the details. They were beings of white light. This is the best way I can describe them. They approached me, and I asked if they knew my father. They indicated something telepathically. At the end of the light, I asked if they could accompany me since I was still in an incident. They agreed, and we cautiously moved toward the end of the light. Moving slowly was necessary, not knowing what was on the other side. They explained that I had to enter to find out. I feared that the feeling of love and hugs might disappear upon entering, 
but I trusted the white light beings and walked through what seemed like a door. The light was so intense that I couldn't see beyond or into it. It didn't hurt my eyes. I simply couldn't see beyond to glimpse the other side. Crossing the threshold, I found myself watching myself live this experience. I had three different perspectives of myself, along with a 360-degree view of everything. I saw myself ascending into the world of lights, beyond a large barrier of clouds. I climbed and arrived in a place I can only describe as a world of lights. Everything was shining and sparkling like diamonds. Every tree, plant, and flower was immaculate. There wasn't a dead leaf or a twig. Everything was clean and perfect. I walked for quite some time along a path, admiring the surrounding beauty. I reached a crossroads. To the left was a building made of transparent crystalline material, which seemed to penetrate the ground and rise at an incredible angle. I remember thinking, wow, this is amazing. There were 12 crystalline walls, each with names written in different colors. They were English names that I could read. I don't remember the names now, but I remember thinking that I had to remember them. I stared at the building for quite some time. I saw two women approaching me. I was afraid to talk to anyone, not knowing where I was or where I could go. So I tried to hide behind a tree to avoid being seen. When the women approached, I hid even more in the tree. Entering the tree thrilled me. I never thought I could do this. I watched the two women pass by as if they couldn't even see me. I stayed in the tree for a long time, happy to be inside. The colors inside the tree reminded me of what I was made of. I heard a playful male voice asking if I intended to stay in the tree all the time. I laughed and replied that I didn't think I could go anywhere else. The voice told me that the tree was my home and that I could go anywhere I desired. I started walking along the path, doing gymnastics. As a child, I loved gymnastics, and now I was performing it perfectly, something I had never done before. It seemed like I had my eyes closed, following someone else's movements. I remember entering what I would describe as an office or a room. The view was breathtaking, earth, beautiful in its splendor. The water was a deep blue, incredible. There was a wall or a window from floor to ceiling, made of the same material as the other building, perhaps even the same building. I was so engaged in dancing and doing gymnastics that I wasn't paying attention. The space around Earth was like now, black. It was the only time I saw something dark up there. I was simply looking through that transparent wall toward Earth, reflecting on everything I had been through in my life. I thought about the horrible things I had experienced, repeating mentally, why doesn't God protect me from abuse? Don't I love him enough for him to help me like the people in the Bible? I wondered why he hadn't taken care of me. I didn't believe that anyone loved or appreciated me in this world. I kept repeating these questions to myself, and this time I received answers. A male voice, sweet and melodious, replied to me, He will. I felt the weight of worry lift from my spirit, as if a burden had been taken from my shoulders. I asked why God wasn't taking care of me, and he said that the difficulties I was facing were temporary. I told him that I hadn't made the mistakes I was being accused of, but no one believed me. He assured me that he believed in me. Hearing someone believe in me was an immense relief. I kept looking at Earth, marveling at its size and colors. I thought I wished to be more beautiful, and he confirmed that I was. Even when I saw myself in the light, I looked the same, but he told me that wasn't really me. I realized that that non-me was the real me, loved and perfect. Each answer further alleviated my worries. He told me that I was perfect and that I didn't need to be so hard on myself. He reassured me that nothing could change his love for me and that I was special like the people in the Bible. He showed me that every particle of me was full of love and happiness, I just wanted to be with God, and he told me that I would be soon. As I expressed my desire not to have to sleep forever, Jesus turned around, and in front of me was the most handsome man I had ever seen. His gaze was full of love and enthusiasm, with eyes of an intense blue I had never seen before. He was young, tall, dark, and incredibly handsome. There was no one on earth who could match his beauty. He was perfect in every sense. 
He ran toward me and hugged me tightly, making me feel completely united with him. We remained lost in each other's gaze for a long moment. I won't have to sleep forever anymore, I thought. With a reassuring smile, he told me that he would live forever and that this place was his home. He explained that I would spend eternity there with them. This contrasted with what Jehovah's Witnesses teach, which is that I would not go to paradise but into a state of eternal sleep until Jesus' resurrection. He asked me if I wished to stay there or return to earth. I don't know what to do, I replied, uncertain. God loves you and enjoys having you on earth, he reassured me. I said that I loved everyone, and he confirmed that he knew, adding that everyone loved and appreciated me. He explained that even the animals loved me and that he could show me my future if I returned. Looking through the transparent wall overlooking earth, I saw myself happy, laughing joyfully. I desperately desired that happiness, contrasting my unhappiness on earth, marked by abuse and the belief that I wouldn't go to paradise. I felt my spirit constantly oppressed. I didn't even have a happy memory. I wanted to live what that girl in front of me was experiencing. I saw myself married, happy simply to be alive. I saw all the people I would save and bring to God. I wanted everyone to feel the same sensation I was feeling. Love was perfect and sufficient. I desired nothing else. It was all I wanted and continue to want. After seeing how many people I would help reach God, I realized I wanted to return, despite the fear of going back to an abusive home. I broke eye contact with Jesus and began to look toward earth, desiring his company. I thought he might refuse to come with me, feeling the weight of his possible negative response. I felt I wasn't good enough and considered him too handsome to want to return with someone like me. If I go back, I wouldn't want to stay long, I confessed with a sigh. That's okay, he replied with a reassuring smile. I prepared to ask him to accompany me, not believing he would accept. I already loved him so much and didn't want him to ever leave me. I looked back at him and saw that he was still smiling, as always. His gaze didn't waver, maintaining an intensity that made me feel loved and protected. I thought that if he returned with me, no one would ever hurt me again, and I could prove to my stepmother the truth about the accusations against me. He believed in me and could defend me. Moreover, he was the most handsome man I had ever seen and would ever see again. With courage, I asked him to come with me. Sure, I will go, he replied immediately. We ran toward each other, and I felt an indescribable emotion as our gazes intensely met. He hugged me tightly, his hands wrapped around mine, and we got lost in our loving gazes. I felt on cloud nine, overflowing with joy, love, and excitement. Even today, every time I think about it, that feeling remains vivid. Then, a man entered the room through the door behind us. He was also extremely handsome, with the same welcoming expression as Jesus. He seemed very happy to see me, and handed Jesus a scroll. Next to Jesus was a small podium where the man was signing something, I looked at the man behind Jesus and noticed his big smile full of love. He didn't stay long and left through the same door he had entered. Jesus wanted to show me something, so we walked together for a long stretch to a magical place surrounded by blooming flowers. I remember walking along a path with Jesus to a house, or at least part of it. I could see that one side of the house was covered by a body of water. Jesus explained that it was a reflecting pond, I was eager to explore it and took a step forward to observe better. I turned to see where Jesus was and found him watching me with eyes full of love and a contagious smile. I waited for him to approach and he said to me, this is your home. Really? This is my home? I asked amazed. It was perfect and I loved it immediately without even seeing it clearly. We entered and he directed me toward the reflecting pond, undecided whether to return or not. I adored that place and thought I didn't want to go back. Jesus watched silently. His smile remained unchanged. We sat by the pond, exchanging looks full of affection and love. I couldn't believe that house was mine. It was simply perfect. Jesus still had something to show me before returning to earth. We walked hand in hand, not knowing exactly where we were going, as I was engrossed in watching Jesus. I remember he was excited to show me something, 
and I was curious to see what it was. Jesus had already given me a house, a gesture no one had ever done for me except my grandmother. When I entered the door, a huge crowd of smiling people greeted me. It seemed impossible to count them all. They were all bright, full of heavenly colors, love and light, excited to see me. They telepathically conveyed their affection and pride. I wanted to stay and visit them all, loving each one of them, even though I didn't know them. I wish I hadn't spent so much time in the tree. I could have visited them, I expressed to Jesus, feeling a sense of regret for not having talked to those two women, now understanding how important they were. Jesus began to laugh about the tree, commenting on me. Everyone found the situation funny and laughed along with us. It was a magical moment I will never forget. We had to return to earth, so we said goodbye to everyone. Before leaving, Jesus opened a door that led us to a multitude of bright and happy people. Everyone greeted me with smiles full of love and pride. He explained that the journey would be strange, but with his love, we traveled back. I felt his presence inside me as we traveled quickly toward earth, an unforgettable journey without fear of falling. I longed for one last look before re-entering my body. It was heavy, dirty, warm and sweaty, and I felt no attachment. I easily entered my body, feeling it as an empty shell from the inside and dense from the outside. I moved inside for a few seconds, down the legs, up the legs, down the arms and up the arms. I felt people trying to wake me up, but I couldn't speak or reconnect with my body. Jesus reassured me that it would only take a moment to reconnect. Finally, I asked if anyone had a mint, but they told me I couldn't have anything, not even water. I tried all the mints and chewing gums I could remember, causing annoyance to the operators. I just wanted to have fresh breath to answer their questions. I was taken to my hospital room where my father was waiting for me. I looked for Jesus, but I didn't see him. I thought he would pass through the door, but I never saw him again and continued to look for him, hoping to see him one day. It took almost a year to learn to walk again. My life has been forever changed by the love Jesus showed me. This is all for this incredible experience. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Until next time, stay safe, be blessed, and see you in the next video.